first time I uh, met JP was uh, he was volunteering with us here. I remember the first time when he went on the boat. He was just excited I and mean, he was overly excited. Just a guy that loves to be on the boat, loves to be on the ocean, loves to be around sharks. So the first time I saw a great white shark, I uh, was 12 and I went with my family, we went to visit uh, South Africa and we went to Cape Town. Then there was the opportunity to go and see great white sharks. Uh, they, are, they are my favorite animals, so I had to go and watch them. So only me and my dad, we went to, to the boat. We were the only brave ones to go and watch the sharks. Uh, everything was amazing on that trip. We saw massive sharks and my dad managed to get a beautiful photo of the shark jumping out of the water, so breaching. And I managed to get that on video. And that was it. I was hooked for Africa and I knew I had to come back to, to see at least again the great white sharks. So when I returned, uh, I was already 16 and I went back as a volunteer and the whole thing was just amazing. South African perfumes, huh? Manda, deep breath, deep breath, come on. Super happy be back to my beautiful sharks to it was the first time I finally went to the cage uh, freezing cold but we had this amazing thing of a shark coming and even bumping into the cage and making a very weird sound it looked like metal and rubber uh, and we had the most amazing sharks all this documentary, all of the footages that I have, actually they were filmed in a very funny way. I grabbed my GoPro and I tied it with duct tape on the end of the broomstick. I had quite a big broomstick and then every time the sharks would come past near the boat, I would just, I would dive in the GoPro to be able to film and to get as close as personal to the great white sharks. Sadly, this is not the GoPro that filmed uh, all the sharks. That one, sadly, uh, a great white shark destroyed it. He, I, just, uh, I was not fast enough to remove the, the camera from the sharks, so he grabbed the GoPro and completely destroyed it. So the first time I was in the cage, the only things I can remember is how cold it was, <laughs> how nervous I was. It's like a big mixture of adrenaline because you're now in the water, the waves are coming, uh, the water is freezing cold, 14 Celsius degrees. It's hectic, cold, cold, cold. And then the shark comes, they just go down, 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 shark, shark, shark. And you just, you have to pull yourself and drop and try to see the shark. I don't know why I created a tradition, <laughs> which was uh, no matter who it was, every time the first, uh, first new volunteer would come, everyone, uh, some of the crew members and all the volunteers, we would have to go all, all in one time at the cage, but without wetsuits. And that, <laughs> that was a horrible idea. I'm super skinny. Ah! <laughs> Jesus. Okay, from 0 to 10, minus 10. One of the coolest parts of the job was the shark data. So every time uh, we would have one of the volunteers sitting on the top, 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 top of the, of the boat and his job was, his or her job was, look at the shark. The shark only, ha only stays around 3 to 4 seconds. And you have to try to guess size, sex, 
and look at the fins, dorsal fin, back fin, caudal fin, everything, bite marks and take a note of everything and then behavior, aggressive, calm, smooth, uh, went for the bait, didn't went for the bait, so you, uh, you would have your favorite sharks, the ones that would throw a big show and the ones that were just, yeah, they were just nice. We had the rosy, a tiny little female, 2.5 meters, and she was very inquisitive, always checking the cage, always checking my camera too many times. So little rosy was also very, very funny. The way I did manage to film the sharks was actually I was sitting on the engine. So outside of the boat, I would sit on the engine with my feet touching the water. And one day I'm filming one shark then I feel something shaking. I look behind me and go, huh, there's a big splash, very big splash. And I'm like, huh, what happened? And uh, the volunteer that was taking the data just says, a great white shark just went for your feet and missed it by this. So from that day on, I remember to always pull my feet up and never be with the feet touching the water. Nothing but nothing beats Diva. Diva, she was a 3.5 meter female. The first time I saw her, I knew it. She was a special shark. I knew she was something else, something different. The reason why I knew that it was because it was the first time we saw that shark and the first time she got the bait. So just like that, we lost the bait. We had to put it again. We throw the water back and then again, she takes the bait with no chance. I named it Diva because she would never come if you were if there was other sharks around no 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 it's her show and that's why i loved uh diva i uh, saw diva and i think it's almost like he instantly fell in love uh, that day on the way back that was the only thing he talked about just diva the shark diva he actually named her diva and nothing else he was just talking about her every day when we went out again he was just talking about diva one thing that i remember and i i won't forget this ever it was, i think it was one of his last days before his time was up we went on a trip and we were about an hour hour and a half into the trip but no sightings of anything, not even a, a, a fish, nothing. And uh, he wrote a song. He wrote a song uh, uh, for Diva. And it was on the music of Piano Man. And he just decided about halfway through the trip, he's gonna chum and he's gonna play this, this music and he's gonna sing the song. He did that, played the music, start singing about I think just not even 30 seconds then Diva just came up it's almost like she heard him and he was we all were stunned everyone sees the the fin everyone starts yelling Diva everyone goes crazy all everyone the crew members the poor tourists they had no idea what was happening but when we start telling them the story that I wrote this song for her, everyone start calling me Shark Whisperer. We, we didn't know what's going on. And she just came up, almost like coming to say goodbye to him. And it, it was just almost like a connection that the two of them had. Uh, that's just something that I never, I, I'll never forget it. And even years after, he's still just talking about Diva. He always asked me. Uh, have we seen Diva? How is she doing? How is she look like? Uh, it's just something I think 
I think it was his first love. <laughs> now, sharks are extremely important in their environment. They mostly occupy the top of the food chains where they live and therefore they control that food chain. I'll give you a very classic example. Uh, many years ago, in the 1950s, there was a, a time where white sharks were nearly wiped out from the uh, shores of California, which of course made the pinniped population, so that's sea lions and seals, increase dramatically which of course uh, those animals then ate all of the mackerel and sardines and all of the other uh, small tilios that they fed upon, which had a dire effect in the local economy. So really sharks are extremely important in their environment. So these are just few uh, examples. I could be here all day telling you about um, how fascinating sharks are, the, the extraordinary predators that they are, how they control food chains in the oceans and maintain balance in the oceans. So really, we should look at them with a lot of respect and cherish them, because as you may have, have heard, there are some horrible things happening to sharks worldwide, and we really need to pay attention to them. Two years later, if I'm not mistaken, I went one day hoping Diva would be there. Everyone was happy to be back. And I asked for Diva and they said the last time we saw Diva was that day that I sang to her. We need to protect the sharks. 